Due to strong patriarchal content, viewer discretion is advised. This is Justina, a feminist. Justina wants to create equality by purging our minds of traditional gender roles. This is Dr. Carl Jung, a sexist. Dr. Jung and his patriarchal collaborators created the test called the MBTI, a science of typology that Justina finds to be problematic. So a lot of the stereotypes and conversations on the forums and in the videos about Myers-Briggs and the functions um, have sexist ideologies behind them, and this is why they're so appealing to people who don't want to think for themselves. One of the things the MBTI tests is a person's style of decision making. It can be impersonal and objective, which it calls thinking, or it can be social and sentimental, which it calls feeling. Everyone uses both styles, but never at the same time and not with the same skill. The impersonal thinking style is typical of men, so much so that feminists often call it patriarchal rationality. But this male preference for thinking has a cost. A preference for thinking means that one's subjective feelings get pushed into the unconscious, remaining undeveloped and wild, until someone can be found who can draw those feelings out, someone who has a preference for feeling. So his partner would ideally have to be a feeling type woman, as most are. But this is offensive to that 20% of women who are thinking types, because it means that normal women, the romantic women, may be more naturally attractive to men than the logical women. And that is not okay. Women are not supposed to prefer logic. It does not matter which culture you talk to, you know, which culture you're a part of, um, what holy books you read, what law you live under. Women are not supposed to have more logic. Although there is nothing, I repeat, nothing, in the field of science or biology, neurobiology, or psychology that prove this statement. Nothing. That is a gender stereotype, okay? That is part of sexism. According to Justina, sexism has many parts. One part is the value placed on thinking. The thinking preference tends to be valued more when it's seen in men. Another part is the value placed on feeling, because men are more valued when they have introverted feeling, when they keep their opinions and emotions to themselves and pretend to be the strong and silent type. But with women, it's the opposite. Women are more valued by men when they have extroverted feeling, when they proactively share their emotions and open their hearts to others. Justina calls this sexism. I call it romance, but it's the same difference. What's in a word? that two-thirds of women are feeling types and two-thirds of men are thinking types. Yeah, okay. Um, I would really like to burst that bubble. It's gonna hurt some of your feelings. Misogynist, you're gonna get very upset. But I think if you're that tough, you can handle it. Anyone who's argued with a feminist knows it's almost certainly futile, a total waste of time. But she did ask for feedback, so I watch the comments, and I see Tyrannius agree that everyone who takes the MBTI is doing it through a mask, a persona. He agrees that they're not really being honest with themselves. But Tyrannius also says that it's probably true, because if it was false, there would be no gender bias for us to complain about. Besides, he says, it does make sense that the difference helped us survive. It's evolution. It's in our hormones. But... Justina rejects the hormone argument. She says estrogen has nothing to do with caring. She says that feeling is just as decisive, just as rational as thinking. 
And I think, okay, well, that's MBTI-ish, but that's not technically accurate. So now I insert myself into the conversation. I say, yes, it's true that both thinking and feeling are rational functions. However, the thinking function is decisive about abstractions and strategies, which is better for the masculine task of group leadership, which is key to group survival. So it makes sense that this probably did evolve. Then Justina says that Martin Luther King Jr. was a good leader, even though he was a feeling type. Therefore, we have no reason to accept the stereotype of male thinking without proof. Then Tyrannia says we have proof. We can confirm the stereotypes just by looking around. He says the underlying cause might be biological or might be social, but we can see the effect everywhere. And one woman says that if it's true, it would explain why logical women are considered weird and why logical women feel that the mainstream society is sexist. But Justina insists again that we cannot really measure anyone's true personality because everyone is programmed with sexist assumptions. Then FG16 points out that we already accept statistics regarding extroversion and introversion and sensing and intuition, so why are we now freaking out about thinking and feeling? He says it's just a natural difference between male and female, it's just a polarity, opposites attract. And Justina says she can confirm the other stereotypes just by looking around, but she cannot see any preponderance of thinking type men. And I think this country is pretty sad if we can't even find thinking type men on a college campus. Justina says she can't see it, therefore any finding that links men with logic or links women with feeling is totally unfounded and sexist. And I say, well, you only think it's unfounded and sexist because you just disregarded 50 years of research and because you think that everybody who takes these tests is lying about their masculine and feminine traits due to some unconscious need to seem normal and because you think that you alone have mystical knowledge of everyone's real personality and because any data that doesn't fit your egalitarian presupposition is simply ignored. That is so not scientific that an INTJ might say, check your premises. And Justina says, what, you mean the egalitarian presupposition that men and women are equal and deserve equal rights? You're right, it's not empirical. You have to use your feeling function. This might frighten you, but you have to feel it. And I'm like, that is so illogical that I have no response. My thinking functions have failed me. Meanwhile, FG16 talks about romantic relationships where the stereotype is subverted, where the man has the feminine energy and the woman is all tough and objective. And I say, sure, one example of this is Agents Mulder and Scully from the X-Files, because Mulder is written as a feeling type, just like all vampire characters are. Then Justina claims that I'm using language to intimidate her, that I'm using a sexist tactic. I'm like, what? language is a tool of the patriarchy she's oppressed by disagreement so i say i'm talking about the egalitarian presupposition that says labeling data sexist means you can just ignore it i say instead look at the research that studied 15,000 people in 19 different countries and found they were all sexist both the men and the women in the study were found to be sexist which means that these so-called stereotypes are normal human behavior I say, look, I know I can't intimidate you, certainly not with logic, because your contempt for sexist overrides any ability to use logic. Then, FG16 speculates that Agent Mulder might not be a feeling type, because he might be playing Mr. Sensitive Guy to mess with Scully's head. And I say, well, we know Mulder is an INFJ, and we know Scully is an INTJ. And we know this because that's how screenwriting schools use them to teach character development. And I go into some of the work of Melody Ann Phillips, the screenwriter who actually does not use the MBTI. Uh, Melody Ann Phillips independently derived the TF distinction from an intensive study of pop culture, who suggested to me that these so-called stereotypes are universally valid. But then Justina says, if you can't see the reality of sexism in the MBTI, then I can't convince you your mind is already made up. And I'm typing something arcane about the animus and anima that gender polarity in the deep subconscious and how all of this applies to romantic relationships, but I can't post this because I am now banned from her channel. I do want to warn you, I want to give you a caveat that I do not appreciate <laughs> trolling or 
perceived trolling either, and I do not appreciate prejudice. Some people surprise me with their stupidity, but not this time. I predicted that. I expected to get banned. What I didn't expect was being told that I somehow intimidated her. I'm like, intimidate? Intimidate an INTJ? Now that is pretty badass. That is hardcore. There should be a debating medal just for that. Intimidation of INTJ. <laughs> yes. Yes, fear the INTP. Fear the patriarchal rationality. Fear the introverted thinking. Yes, INTP. We are that tough and we can handle it. Anytime you try to study people, prejudice gets in the way because we are human. And I think the best thing to do is to eradicate that prejudice. You know, all prejudice is just a projection of one's own insecurities. So what's this crusade really about? It's political, so it's about what politics is always about. Power. Particularly power over men. The power to force a change in everyone's attitude to be more convenient to her personally. She's against sexism, which means she must disparage and attack all the sexes, which means she must attack everybody. It is a moral imperative she has to attack. She won't be happy until everyone bends to her will, even the men of the mind. Political correctness is the opposite of science. Leftist logic says that if everyone everywhere perceives some fact about a type, that fact must therefore be false and stupid because only the progressives hold correct opinions. Justina must think reality is socially constructed, that everything is opinion. So if everyone feels a certain way, it's not really a truth, just a prejudice. It's just a very common prejudice, and we have to put more effort into stamping it out. We have to watch ourselves, control ourselves, and apply the same thought control to the people around us. And above all, the egalitarians need more funding. But how useful is having a prejudice-free psychology if sexism is everywhere and we can find prejudice in all known human beings? Justina is pushing a psychology that can apply only to mythical beings only to egalitarian, individuated, androgynous intellectuals. And that's a standard so high that not even rational INTJs can meet it. Even Ian Rand believed in gender. Even Ian Rand was a sexist. Justina imagines a post-patriarchal utopia where women have all the power of men and all the privileges of men. The problem is, gender is in part biological. So a post-patriarchal society would necessarily have to be post-human. Justina weeps the tears of F.I. over all the stereotypes about men and women. But I'm still human, so I don't see a problem in the fact that most humans are heterosexual, or the fact that most humans like stereotypical things. It just means that they're normal, it means that they're predictable, which is good because predictability means psychology can be more than politics and more than art, it can be a science. Psychology can be a science that gets results because it's true. Scientific truth does not need a moral crusade to force people to believe it. Scientific truth is self-evident. But there's no point in arguing. I'm blocked anyway. I'll just have an inner dialogue about it because that would be more productive. question. Um, NTPs are supposed to be like 1 to 2 percent of the population, and yet you're like 40 percent of the internet. What's up with that? 